Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing, why was Jesus angry at the money changers? In John chapter 2 verses 13 to 16, Jesus did something that would shock the religious leaders of his day. He made a small whip, scattered all the coins and animals of the money changers, and drove them out of the temple. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. Why was Christ so angered by what they were doing? Well, he was angry because the money changers were taking advantage of temple sacrifices to make a profit. They didn't care about worshipping God, which is why they were busy exchanging cash rather than reading the Torah or listening to sermons. You see, sometimes Israelites had to sacrifice animals at the temple, according to places like Leviticus chapter 4 and Numbers chapter 15 verses 22 to 31. However, some cunning people convinced the populace that they didn't need to spend all that time raising animals only to give them away. They could just buy animals from them and keep their livestock to themselves. Seeing the efficiency of this process, some other merchants decided to forego the sacrifice entirely and just focus on economics. They told the people, why keep a farting, smelly animal around when you could just exchange it for money? After all, Cash is a lot easier to handle than living things. Suddenly, simple convenience had created a profitable business. Of course, Jesus wasn't just mad at the money changers. He was also mad at the Pharisees for taking advantage of their business instead of defending Jehovah's interests and the holiness of the temple. As it was said in Titus, For a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Titus chapter 1 verses 7 to 9. The Pharisees should have never let merchants take over the church, but they were corrupted by the profits that their business provided. As it was said in Mark, they take advantage of widows and rob them of their homes, and then make a show of saying long prayers. Their punishment will be all the worse. Mark chapter 12 verse 40 according to the Good News Bible. They took advantage of this arrangement to enrich themselves, and they eventually became its supervisors. Therefore, the Pharisees fell into the trap that greed creates. As Paul said, For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 They spent so much time running this enterprise that they didn't have time for actual worship, according to Matthew chapter 23 verse 23. That's why Christ said we can't serve God and mammon in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. An example of someone who could focus on their faith rather than money can be found in 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 15 to 16. Naaman wanted to pay Elisha for his healing, but the prophet refused, because he knew that God wasn't interested in Naaman's money. He was interested in getting Naaman to worship him. The apostles would adopt Elisha's attitude in Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. In chapter 4 verses 34 to 35, the church started to acquire property and money through donations, but Greek widows were getting less money than their Hebrew counterparts. To prevent church services from becoming about money, they set up a committee to handle the matter and went back to preaching. As they said in Acts, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Acts chapter 6 verse 2. They didn't want to profit from the situation. They only wanted to glorify their father, and this widow matter was simply a distraction from that. Their decision reflected God's desire to keep business and religion separate. He didn't like the fact that merchants were turning the temple into a bank. After all, it was built to help Israelites communicate with him, and he didn't use money. As it was said in Psalms, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. 
Psalms chapter 24 verse 1. If God owns everything, what does he need money for? Therefore, my advice is that just like the Pharisees shouldn't have let the money changers take over the temple, we shouldn't let greedy people take over our faith. They might make materialism and cares of this life seem attractive, but eventually it is our worship of God that will matter in the end, not money. As it was said in 2 Thessalonians, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 And that is where I am going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Why was Jesus angry at the money changers? He was angry at them because they were profiting from the worship of God, and he was disappointed that the Pharisees weren't as angry at them as he was. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.